My name is Martin Rogers, I'm the National Flood and Access Advisor at the National Farmers Union. What will you be discussing this evening? Well first and foremost this evening I'll be talking about the impacts of recent flood events on agriculture and the importance of flood mitigation also improving the resilience of rural communities and rural businesses to future flood events uh, and one of the ways in which that can be achieved is through taking a holistic approach to flood mitigation. Natural flood management is one of the options within a range of measures available to increase the resilience of downstream communities to flooding, but it's not a panacea solution and we do need to also continue to look at continued maintenance and capital budgets going forwards for the construction and maintenance of more heavy engineered assets. What kind of factors need to be taken into account to manage floods sustainably? Well, farmers do have a role to play in mitigating flood risk for downstream communities by getting involved in natural flood risk management uh, techniques. But there is an absolute need for there to be credible, independent advice available to give that advice to farmers on the natural flood management techniques that both help to increase resilience to flood risk for communities downstream, but also work alongside their current farming practices. Um, we have examples in the southwest, for instance, Flag Southwest, where they've built up a relationship with farmers over many decades and they sit in a very good position to talk through the options available to farmers and discuss which ones are optimum for both their catchment condition and the farming practices which they're involved with and that is fundamental to the success of any natural flood management schemes going forwards. What's also important to consider is the incentive scheme which must be put in place to increase the likelihood of farmers getting involved. Put simply, if farmers are going to undertake activities to increase the resilience of downstream businesses to flooding, then there must be some form of incentive there that has to take into consideration the losses to their business when water inundates on their land. Uh, it must also include costs of the recovery of any operation to repair after a flood event. Uh, and there must also be some recognition of the flood mitigation service which they're providing. There are smaller scale schemes which farmers could get involved with in the shorter term. So for instance, soil management or aeration or subsoiling uh, gives the opportunity to potentially increase infiltration rates within the soil, um, but also it can improve productivity on agricultural land. But what's absolutely important is that, the, again, the correct advice is available to farmers with regards to the relevant options available in each catchment. Uh, and it must be taken into consideration that no two catchments are the same, no soil is the same, so there's never going to be a one-size-fits-all uh, measure which can be undertaken to improve soil conditions within a catchment, and that must always be considered. How can we use geographical evidence to better inform our decision making? In terms of where to position natural flood management schemes, it's important that those decisions are evidence-led. That is why the National Farmers Union is part of the Centre for Ecology and Hydrology's systematic review into how tree planting can mitigate future flood risk downstream. We think it's very important that catchment-based holistic research is undertaken to look at the mitigation potential of natural flood management schemes to aid that understanding of, of where they're best placed. Why is it important for the Society to hold an event on this topic? Uh, this evening is very important because it's absolutely vital that industry, agriculture, research, policy makers and practitioners all come together to discuss flood mitigation because only when we work together rather than in silos are we going to fully understand the best possible options to increase the resilience of this country. What one recommendation would you give to policymakers working to achieve sustainable flood risk management in the long term? So we've talked a lot today about natural flood management, however we need to realise that that is only one of the measures out there and there will always be a need for continued maintenance and capital works to increase the resilience of this country to flooding. As part of that, risk management authorities need to get involved with more public sector cooperation agreements where decisions are made about which risk management authority is best place to undertake the maintenance or capital works within that part of the catchment. That takes into consideration the knowledge that each agency has about that catchment, the resources and technical equipment which they have in that catchment, and by understanding that we're going to be better placed to have the best authority dealing and doing the best maintenance work in each catchment. 
What needs to happen to make your recommendation a reality? Yeah, so I, I would reiterate that public sector cooperation agreements really do look like a good way forward to increase the resilience of this country to flooding. If we have the best risk management authority, whether that be internal drainage boards, the environment agency or local authorities undertaking the maintenance within that catchment, then we're going to have the best cost efficient maintenance across the country. To get to the stage where the correct risk management authority is undertaking the maintenance within a particular catchment, there needs to be greater communication between the different risk management authorities at that local catchment based level. Uh, we've already got great communication links through things such as the Regional Flood and Coastal Committee, uh, but we need to develop that further so that there's greater, more transparent, open discussions about who is best placed to undertake the maintenance within a particular catchment. What impact has the recent EU referendum had on farmers and sustainable flood risk management? The NFU recently conducted one of its largest ever consultations regarding the referendum and what we should look for going forward with regards to getting the best deals for British agriculture. We focused our questions on trade, labour, access to the common market, the domestic agricultural policy and also the environment. Whilst trade came up as the most important factor for members going forwards, environment did feature very strongly and one of the key messages coming through is that particularly where it comes to flood risk management, even though we're going through a great period of transition, we cannot slow down the rate at which schemes are undertaken, maintenance work is undertaken to increase the resilience of this country to flooding.